Here's the submission, uh, just looking for some general tuning advice, specifically looking for improvement on the pitch axis, and also your yaw gain is lower than you've had in the past. Uh, let's take a look at your tune. You're using the rewrite controller, and your yaw gain is 7.5, which, yeah, that's, that's lower. I mean, it's common with rewrite to see it in the 9 to 11 range. Uh, but I also have found on, uh, I'm on Betaflight 2, I think I'm on 241, just like you are, and I have it down around 6, which is unusually low for me. So, eh, you know, as long as it flies good, then uh, don't, don't question it. But let's just, let's dive in and take a closer look. So here we are looking at your gyros and, uh, you know, this just like you know, whenever you go to the doctor, they take your pulse and your temperature, right? Take your blood pressure, your pulse, your temperature. Just take your vitals. Looking at the gyros is kind of like that for these traces. Uh, we look at this and we can see that, you know, overall things are probably not too far off because the lines are relatively thin. The yaw line is a little noisier than the pitch and the roll line, which are very, very, very thin. And uh, yeah, so you're probably not too far off. Now, I noticed that your throttle doesn't go very high throughout most of this. I, I'm guessing, you know, what, what's your setup? What's your setup? Yeah, 2205, 2300, five by four by three. So probably uh, 515 grams all up weight, nice light copter. Um, Probably the reason your throttle doesn't go too high is because you don't need to to get this get this copter going as opposed to you just sort of sitting there not doing anything. Um, if you're just hovering, though, and just blipping the sticks around a little bit, then this could be a little misleading. It's always nice to get at least one good high throttle punch in, in, in a tuning log. And we can see here that even when your throttle goes a little high, you're still peaking around 1500. Again, with a light copter on those motors with those props, it's, it's probably screaming. But uh, yeah, so probably you're in the ballpark because your gyros are, are so thin. Uh, you probably are not overtuned anyway. Let's take a look at your roll axis first, which is just the order I like to do things. And I'm going to go to the points where you raise the throttle the most and look at how active the P-term gets. And we can see that as you raise the throttle, and here around 1558 is about as high as it gets, you can see that the P-term is not super active. We don't see any strong sort of cresting waves surging. It's not completely docile. It's not a flat line. And here even maybe, maybe even we start to see some, some are those oscillations? No, surely not. It's so low we do see some kind of regular uh, sine wave-ish shapes the regularity of these is, is standing out to me as maybe indicative of i don't know what but the magnitude is so small you just can't read too much into it right it's just your 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 p term is barely getting up and, and getting out of bed okay so even as you raise the throttle here, you know, it doesn't really get active. So I feel like you have a lot of room to raise your P gain on roll. Leave the D gain where it is. The D gain is, the D term is proportional to the P term. It is generally following the P term. It, it, the shape of the D term is similar to the shape of the P term. There's not a lot of extra zigs and zags in the D term, right? So that's good. That's all indicates that the D term is kind of where it needs to be. But the P term is just kind of sitting there and, and barely waking up. Let's look at another high throttle situation where you raise the throttle again. The P term, is, it's not even close to oscillating. And I would like to see the P term, you know, like I like to say, you got a race car, you want to hear the tires squeal every now and then. If, you, if, a race car, if a racing driver is putting in laps and you don't hear the tires squealing, he's not going as fast as he should be going. And I want to see, I want to see the P term on roll and pitch. I want to see it waking up. I want to see the horse rearing its head and rolling its eyes a little bit. You know, I don't want to see it just standing there going, okay, what are we doing? Okay, so I feel like you got room to raise that. Uh, we do have some, uh, at the end of this roll, we do have some rebound and oscillation. Notice that the gyro line 
this as this this part where the gyro line is descending is where your copter is slowing down at the end of the move as you recenter the stick this part where the gyro line is zeroed is where the copter has stopped and this part where the gyro line continues below the axis is where it is rebounding and then now it's stopped it's finished rebounding and it's moving on its direction now whether that is something that could be seen it is is debatable a lot of times this stuff if we look we've got uh 1.106.6 .6, and here we're at 6.8 so that's two tenths of a second that's not that's not very long that's could be happening so fast that you wouldn't notice it but there's potential here that this rebound is because you're your stopping response is not strong enough because your P gain could be higher. And there's a potential here that you will uh, you'll you'll shorten this up and sharpen it up and make it less noticeable if you raise your P gain. Notice that we don't have any actual ringing. We have it's it kind of oh it's to a stop and then oh it rebounds it was it was trying to stop and it doesn't and it, it doesn't stop sharply enough and then oh it overshoots and rebounds right but we don't have any across the axis ringing where it crosses the axis multiple times we have a kind of a rebound and oh the rebound stutters a little bit and then the copter keeps going okay so that feels to me again consistent with the fact that your p gain your p term here is not super active feels like your roll p gain could go up a little your roll p gain is currently at 3.8 i would feel comfortable telling you to take it to like easily 4.0 and maybe 4.2 like i feel like you you could knock it up a good solid chunk and you'll start to see some oscillations come out that assumes you're trying to tune this copter kind of for acro and racing and you don't mind getting a little sharper and a little closer to the edge uh, which which most people running your setup are Let's look at pitch. And again, I'm going to look at the exact same spots, the spots where you raise the throttle, and I'm going to look at how active the P-term gets during those scenarios. If I had video, I would also look for scenarios where there's prop wash. Maybe I can find that by looking for scenarios where you drop the throttle and then raise it abruptly, like here-ish. OK, so there was a scenario where the throttle was low. It was low for some time, and then you raise the throttle. So presumably that was a prop wash scenario. And if we watch as you raise the throttle, notice that the P-term wakes up. The magnitude of the P-term rises, but we really don't have any oscillation to speak of at all. No oscillation at all. There's no cross-axis oscillation. It wakes up and it moves. There's no real surging and no real oscillation and in a prop wash situation like that i'd like to see it at least think about oscillating maybe you don't want any actual oscillation to come out right but i want to at least see it get close okay okay so again it feels like your p gain is low here as well if we look at the yaw axis <laughs> on the yaw axis Again, let's look for oscillations during this uh, presumed prop wash scenario. As you raise it, it doesn't really see. So there's con. First of all, there's constant oscillation, micro oscillation. Mi let's call them mini oscillations, if you will, on the yaw axis. That's normal because there's usually more noise on the yaw axis. It's normal to see the yaw axis have these kind of constant back and forths. Nothing you can do about that except like obsessively balance your props and your motors and nobody who, who ain't got time for that who's got time for that nobody nobody's got time for that so the fact that we see these little oscillations here that's acceptable and normal they're not big enough to demand that you lower your p gain in fact you might even could stand to raise it a little uh just depends on you're just you're trying to find the right balance between good feel in curves and smooth motors at high throttle um, as you raise the throttle here yeah i think you're pretty close on your yaw you might could even raise it a little more if you want to sharpen up the feel for uh for your turns 
the way a copter feels when the P gain is not high enough on yaw, it's it's a little subtle and it's easy to kind of miss. And the copter would just kind of feels like it's not turning right, but it's not like you're having to really push it into the turn with the stick, or like it's hard to coordinate yaw and roll. Like you feel like you're doing the right thing with the sticks, but for some reason, your copter doesn't want to go into the turns, and raising yaw P gain fixes that. So if you're kind of getting that feeling, then you may want to accept a little bit more noise and raise your yaw P gain, but probably not very much. Right now you are at 7.5. It probably wouldn't go above 8.5 or 9. And maybe just, and if, it, if it's handling okay, leave it where it is. The, uh, your D term is basically non-existent. That's fine. You don't need a lot of D on yaw. If you wanted to raise your yaw D to like 2 or 3, you could probably get away with it and it might feel a little better. Um, your D terms looked fine everywhere else. You probably want to leave them where they are until you get your P a little closer to correct. And with a D of 12 on pitch and 10 on roll, uh, like I'm running 241 as well on my main copter, and I'm at like 5 and 8. So that's you're probably not going to go any higher. And as you raise the P gain, you may end up needing to drop that down a little bit. Just keep an eye on it in the traces. Hope that's all helpful and happy flying.